Hey all, welcome to Book Crowd University. In this module, we'll talk about how to make a good submission. I know this topic seems a little silly on the surface, but as I go through this, hopefully you'll understand why this is important. Making a good submission will ultimately get your bugs triage faster, leading you, the bug hunter, to a faster payout. I'll go through several tips and tricks in this module to help you achieve maximum efficiency in writing your submissions. First off, I'd like to introduce myself as the trainer for this module. My name is JP Villanueva and my researcher handle is Swagnito. I've been bug hunting for about four and a half years now, so I've definitely seen the ins and outs as well as what works and what doesn't work on bug bounty programs. I also work at Bug Crowd as a trust and security engineer, and I'm lucky enough to report to the legend himself, Jason Haddix. I'm also a programmer, hacker, speaker, and gamer. Now let's talk about the module outline at a high level. First, we'll talk about the introduction of why you should make a good submission. Then we'll talk about how to select the correct VRT category, then go into how to use styling to write effective reports, then we'll go through how to make a POC, and lastly we'll talk about best practices and what you can do to be really efficient about making your submissions. First let's talk about why you should even make a good submission and how it affects you as a bug hunter. Let's talk about the golden rule. What's the golden rule? Treat others the way you want to be treated. The golden rule is an important rule to go by in your everyday life. Participation on a bug bounty program is no different. It's a two-way street. You as a security researcher so report your bugs and the analyst on the other side will triage and validate your bugs. Consider how it would feel to be on the receiving end of your own bug report. You should always be respectful in your interactions with others when reporting your bugs. Be professional. Conduct yourself like you would when working a traditional job. The rules have not changed even though you're not talking to someone face to face. Always remember that respect is key. If you learn to respect others while you're doing your bug reporting, the easier it will be to work with the analyst handling your bug. Remember, they're people too. They deserve the same amount of respect that you would expect out of them. Don't be insulting just because they don't understand your report right away. Work with them to understand your bug. Consider that they're not just working with you on the bugs that you've submitted, but they also have to deal with thousands of other submissions as well. Imagine if you had to do that job. If you're going to be a jerk, consider having to deal with yourself if you were on the other side. They have a very difficult job, so the easier you make it on them, the better it will be for you. And we're always remember, Write to a developer audience, not a security person. When a security person is reading out your submission, they definitely understand uh, what it means to go through that. However, they need to explain that to a developer. So if you can help them out by positioning it in such a way that a developer can understand it, the faster the triage process is going to be. Why does this matter? Submissions that are written well are generally paid faster. The more information that you can give in your bug report, the better. This is the path of least resistance. Make it easy on the analyst to be able to reproduce your issue. If you do, the faster you get paid up. Program owners also remember who you are. If you're known as someone who writes good bug reports, the likelihood that your bug gets triaged faster goes up much higher. Conversely, if you're known as someone that writes bad bug reports, people will also remember you for that. Make a good name for yourself and it will pay off so many times over. Again, you'll get paid out faster for your efforts and you will be taken seriously. Repeatability also allows you not to waste your time. The less questions the analyst has to ask you, the less time you're spending trying to explain things. You can then spend that time on bug hunting instead of having to clearly explain to the analyst what the vulnerability is or even how your proof of concept works. This goes back to the previous point about having to understand the vulnerability if you were the triager. Would you be able to understand your own bug given what you've written out in your own submission? That is an, something that is extremely important to consider when writing out your submission. Now that you know why you should make a good submission and why it's important, Let's shift gears and talk about how to select the correct VRT category when reporting your bug. Selecting the correct VRT category is also extremely important. Understanding what your bug actually is will be key to getting your bug properly triaged. 
when you select the correct VRT category for your bug, the chances that your bug will move to triage will not only be higher, but also faster as it's less work for the analyst doing the triaging. Also, this plays into all of the other pieces of your submission, such as writing a good description of the bug and writing a good proof of concept to reproduce that bug. All of this put together not only creates a better quality of life for you as a bug hunter, but also for your analyst doing the triaging so they can quickly make a correct value judgment on whether or not your bug is real and whether or not you have provided enough information so that they can send it to the customer to look at. Understanding the impact of your bug finding will also help set up your own expectations for what that bug is worth. Remember, not all bugs are critical bugs. You have to put yourself in the customer's shoes. If you had to fix this bug, what would be the actual impact to you and your team? If you think in these terms, it's very easy to understand the impact of that bug. The way I think of it is this. What can I actually do with the bug that I've just found? That's why a SQL injection is higher on the priority scale than a reflected XSS. With a SQL injection, I can steal an entire database of credentials. Meanwhile, with a reflected XSS to a regular user, I can only steal their credentials. Also knowing what the program exclusions are on each and every program that you're working on will save you time later. These tend to be very low level vulnerabilities, so you generally don't want to spend too much time on these as the amount of time to write up those submissions could be used to find juicier bugs. Remember, bug bounty programs are a race to who can find the bugs the fastest. If you do not know how to select the correct VRT category for the bug that you've just found, check out these resources such as the researcher documentation, you can also check out the BugCrowd forum and ask questions there, or you can even take part in the discussions of the VRT on GitHub. If a bug class is not represented, you can always choose the top level category for your submission. For example, if you find a server-side injection bug that is not a, let's say, SQL injection or a cross-site scripting, just choose server-side injection and submit your bug that way. It may take longer for your bug to get triaged, However, it might not fit into any of the other categories, so this is your best shot. Next, let's talk about using styling to write effective reports. In this next section, we'll be talking about how you can make your bug reports look as good as possible. Again, why does this matter? Because you want to get paid right away. And an example of this is what you think your submission looks like versus what it actually looks like. Do you want it to look like what's on the left or what's on the right? I think the answer is pretty obvious here. Using Markdown. Great looking submissions make it easier to triage. Remember, developers are going to read your submission to fix the bug that you found. Can they understand your bug and its impact? Markdown is a researcher's best friend. So let's talk about how to use Markdown, where to use it, and when to use it. Here's an example of a submission written in Markdown. On the right, shows you the submission actually written in Markdown, and on the left shows you what the styling looks like once you actually submit the bug. So you can see on the right where it says issue, there's a hash there symbolizing that it's a heading. If you go down a little bit lower where that link is, there's an asterisk symbolizing that it should be bulleted. If you keep going down, it says steps to reproduce, making it very clear exactly which part of the submission it is. And then under it is a numbered way of actually showing your proof of concept. Lastly, the impact showing you that what does this bug actually do? All of this put together is the recipe for a great submission and getting your submission triage a lot faster and again, getting you paid out. Now that we've talked about how to use Markdown and how to style your submission and make it look better, Let's talk about building the, all the necessary pieces of putting your proof of concept together. Let's look at building a proof of concept. First off, write a descriptive title to get the attention of the analyst. Don't write clickbait titles that exaggerate how important your bug is. However, if your bug is in fact critical, use words that accurately describe the bug you found. Use a format such as calling out the target that you found the bug on, 
the type of bug you found, and the functionality that the bug affects. It makes it easier to read, but also if you want to search for your own bugs later, everything is neat and tidy. Obviously, you want to select the correct target that you found the bug on. This will help the customer figure out who they need to send the bug to for fix. Also, pay attention to the scope. Don't intentionally go out of scope and try to be clever by asking to mark the bug as not applicable if the customer does not accept the bug. Not only could you be wasting your time, but you're also breaking the rules of engagement. Yes, the bug may be important, but you must always protect yourself first and foremost if you don't want to get in trouble. Lastly here, choose the correct VRT category to properly call out the impact of your bug. Don't falsify your information here as your likelihood of being taken seriously will go down. Make it easy for your analysts so that, they do, that you're not remembered as a troublemaker. You want to be known for your good submissions, not for your bad ones. Always put the exact URL of where the vulnerability is. I can't stress the importance of this enough. This is what the customer will need to go back and fix the bug and will end up on something like Jira or another bug tracking tool as an important field for developers to pay attention to and look at. Again, use Markdown to your advantage. Better looking reports are going to get triaged a lot faster because it's clear to the analyst what needs to be done and what the important pieces of the proof of concept are. As they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. Take time to create a snapshot to show your proof of concept in action. For those of you who are not comfortable in your English skills, a video is a great way for getting a point across. Also remember that making a video is great because you never know when a fix might come and you might need to prove your bug was there at the time of submission. Last but not least, let's talk about the best practices of what you should be doing to save yourself time and effort when making a good submission. Use a template for all of your reports. How many times are you going to find XSS over the span of your bug hunting career? You're going to find tons. Don't waste time writing up the same report. Create templates for yourself so that all you need to do is to replace the important pieces of information and copy and paste that into your report. Also, use tools like Repro Now will make it easy to replay the POC, but also you can use it to create videos very easily. This will help your bug get triaged as soon as possible, meaning that you will get paid faster. If you know you have something to do more than once, always automate the process. For those of you that, a, that are programmers and are good at scripting, automate your report template process. As you know, every second counts on a bug bounty program and whoever su submits first gets paid out. Using tooling and automation will help you get there. Provide as much information as possible on all of your reports. Put anything and everything that you think that the analyst is going to need to check your proof of concept. The more information you put, the better, because that means that you'll have less back and forth with that analyst and that they will triage your report faster. What does that mean for you? More time for hacking and faster times to get paid out.